What is going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you a new feature for RetroArch that a lot of people should be talking about right now. It's been a long time coming for retro emulation on PC. This also works with Android, Mac, Linux, and a few other systems. What this is called is Run Ahead Latency Reduction. Better latency than real hardware. By latency, we're talking about input lag, or some people like to call it controller lag. I might refer to it again as controller lag because that's what a lot of people know it as. Now this feature was recently added in RetroArch 1.72. They also have a new update 1.73 that added some new features. But I think this is the main thing we need to be talking about right now. If this is set up correctly inside of RetroArch, you will have virtually no input latency whatsoever. From your controller, a keyboard, or a joystick, it really doesn't matter. As of making this video, right now RetroPie is not running the latest version of RetroArch, so it won't work in there just yet. But as soon as it's available, I'm going to test it out and see if it's worth doing a video on. And I think it will be with some emulators. We're not really going to go over the technical details here. If you want to read through this, I will leave a link in the description. I want to show you guys how to use it because when it's set up, it works perfectly. Right now, the RetroArch versions that have this feature enabled are PlayStation 3, the original Xbox, Wii, Wii U, Nintendo Switch, Android, PC Windows, PC Linux, Mac OS, and iOS. So if you're running any of those systems with RetroArch on it, you can set this up. We're going to be focusing on the Windows version here. If you don't have RetroArch set up on your PC yet, don't worry, I've made a video on that. I'll leave a link in the description. If you've never tried it out, you definitely need to. Every game has a certain built-in amount of lag frames. In order for the run-ahead system to work correctly, you're going to have to count the frames that you're lagging. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we're going to set the run-ahead system to that number of frames. For example, if a game like Super Mario World for SNES has a guaranteed two-frame input lag, for best results, set run-ahead frames to two. Now this is a per game basis. Hopefully down the road they can figure something out, but it's going to be different with all hardware. It's going to be different with all controllers. You might get lucky and be able to set it to two for most SNES games if you have decent hardware, but you're going to need to count those frames. I know it's a little bit of a pain to go through hundreds of games and do this, but are you playing a hundred games every single day? I know I'm not. I'm playing a few dozen every week. We're going to move over to RetroArch right now. I'm going to show you how it functions. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you how to save your configuration per game. Let's move over there now. All right. So like I mentioned, this only works with 1.72 and up. I'm on 1.73. The first thing we need to do is set up a menu toggle hotkey. We're going to scroll over to settings down to input. Menu, Toggle, Gamepad, Combo. I have none set here, but I'm going to set it to L3 and R3. So when I push down on my analog sticks, it'll bring me out of the game back into RetroArch. We're going to need this so we can switch back and forth to set the number of frames. I'm going to back up, and I'm just going to go to Configurations, Save Current Configuration. I want that to always be saved by default. Now I already have a few games that I've started here. I haven't messed around with them yet. I've just started them to get them up and running so I could get this tutorial made. We're going to be messing around with SNES using SNES 9X, NES using Nestopia, and Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive in other parts of the world, using Genesis plus GX. Now these are the cores I'm going to be using for each of these. The run ahead latency reduction is not core dependent, so theoretically it should work with every single core, but you might get into some situations like with PlayStation 1 where you'll get some lag because it's a little harder to emulate. First up, let's start Hagani for SNES using the SNES 9X core. We're just going to run it here. For my controller, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected with USB to my PC. I also have my keyboard set up because I'm on PC and I got one close to me. It makes it so much easier if we're going to use the keyboard because we need to pause the game and advance the frames. Show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now this is a big step forward in retro emulation. I know a lot of people might not see it that way, but to have better latency than the original hardware is a really big step for emulation. I'm going to get this guy out of the way first. So what I'm going to do is just jump a few times here. Now I do notice from the button I press to him jumping, there is a little bit of lag here. I'm going to pause the game by pressing P on my keyboard. 
I'm going to hold my jump button. In this game's case, it's A on my controller. And I'm going to press K. I'm just going to press it once, twice. So I started the jump sequence here because I'm ducking down. If I go one more, I will completely start the jump. I know that this game is two frames behind. I'm going to hit my menu toggle hotkey here. Press in L3 and R3. Scroll down to latency. And I'm going to turn on run ahead to reduce latency. Number of frames to run ahead. I want to set this to two because I just tested this game. It's two frames behind. I'm going to back up once. Configuration override options. You can save core overrides. Now every game you start with this SNES 9X core that I'm using here will have two frames set. But I want to save this per game so I'm going to go to save game overrides because every game could be different. Save game overrides. Now every time I start this game here with this core, my run ahead will be set to two. It'll be on and set to two. I'll have no latency whatsoever when I'm playing this game. I'm gonna to go to resume. Now I can even feel that it's a little better here. I've actually been having a hard time getting used to this because I'm so used to having a little bit of lag, I've learned to compensate. But this method is amazing. I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna press P on my keyboard. I'm gonna hold jump, I'm gonna press K. Now I'm only gonna to have to press K once for my character here to start the jump sequence instead of two times. Some games could be up to six, depending on the game, depending on the controller, depending on your hardware. Okay, already started my jump. So I set my run ahead to two frames. I will have no lag playing this game whatsoever. After you set this up, if you have lower end hardware, you might notice that your sound is a little weird. Go back into the menu, scroll down to latency, and run ahead, use second instance. Now, this could also impact your performance because it's gonna be running this game two times with two different instances of this same core. You can always turn it off, but my system is powerful enough to not be affected by the run ahead latency. So that's why I say that the Raspberry Pi might not work great with all the cores, but I'm sure there are some that we can take advantage of this run ahead latency with. Like I mentioned, it is a little weird getting used to because I'm so used to playing with a little bit of lag. I use a lot of single board computers, like a lot of my viewers know, and my brain has been programmed to deal with the lag. I'm gonna back out of here, close content. We're gonna do this one more time with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is a Genesis game. I'm using Genesis plus GX. We're gonna start the game from here, we're gonna press P on our keyboard to pause the game. I'm gonna hold jump on my controller. I'm gonna press K. One, two. So this is also two frames behind. Don't get me wrong here, a lot of these games are two frames behind, but I have decent hardware here, which also makes a big difference. I'm using an official Xbox One controller, and I also have a decent CPU in this unit here. I know this game is two frames behind now. I'll back up. Latency, run ahead to reduce latency, turn that on, set it to two, back up, configuration override options, save game overrides. We'll go in here and start the game. No lag whatsoever from my input here. I went ahead and filmed a little bit of slow motion video, so if you are prone to seizures from flashing lights, please look away. If you're scared of potatoes, please look away. I filmed this on my iPhone 8 Plus, slow motion, and then I slowed it down even more. It's very grainy, and I tried my hardest to line it up as best as possible. If you were to examine the footage frame by frame, you'd actually see that I hit the no run ahead version about a frame before I hit the run ahead version. So it does have a bit of an advantage here, but with run ahead latency reduction set to two, it still blew it out of the water. On the left, we have no run ahead. On the right, we have run ahead set to two frames. I'm gonna slow it down even more here. And if you look close enough, I did hit the no run ahead 
about a frame before I did with the run ahead set. And we still get faster response time with run ahead set to 2. So that's it for this video. The guys at the Libretro team have done an amazing job with RetroArch. Lots of updates coming down the pipeline in the last few weeks. And in my opinion, this is one of the bigger ones that's being overlooked by the community. This is a game changer for retro emulation on PC, Android, Mac, Linux, your PlayStation 3, your Wii, your Wii U, and they're adding new features every week. If you guys are interested in donating to the Libretro team who do RetroArch, I'll leave a link to their Patreon below. I know the Libretro team doesn't expect money from anybody, but they do have a Patreon because there are hidden costs associated with development of things like this. They always need to test new hardware. They've probably always got hardware failures for their developers, and it's just really awesome to have them working on this. It's a labor of love for them. So if you do have the ability to donate, I definitely recommend helping them out. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And like always, thanks for watching.